Right in the warm, sunny heart of Central America, nestled between Guatemala and Nicaragua, lies the little country known as Honduras. Translated from Spanish, meaning deep waters, this incredibly beautiful and unique nation is known for a variety of things, from their stunning coral reefs to their ancient Mayan historical sites. But we're traveling here today for one specific reason. You guessed it. Coffee. Honduran coffee is some of the most delicious and underrated coffee in the world. And today, we are going to learn everything there is to know about the beans that hail from this uniquely special region of Central America. So grab a mug and pull up a chair as we explore the deep waters of Honduran coffee. Honduras may have earned itself the title of most dangerous country on earth in the media, but boy does Honduras produce great coffee. It borders on the countries of Nicaragua and Guatemala, like I said, which are both producers of great quality coffee beans in their own right. When it comes to Honduran coffee, though, it all started in the 18th century when a few traders brought coffee to Honduras. By the 1800s, a few small-scale Honduran farmers were already toying around with the crop. But Honduran coffee wasn't really seriously considered a real commodity powerhouse yet, especially with banana exports being such a strong economic force in Honduras. Bananas, in fact, accounting for over 80% of Honduran exports by 1929. Bananas were so integral to Honduran society, in fact, that the term Banana Republic was first used by the American writer O. Henry in the early 20th century to describe Honduras's over-reliance on banana exports and unstable economy because of that. Maybe taking note of this themselves, the Honduran people kicked large-scale coffee cultivation into overdrive by the mid and late 1900s. Many factors were responsible for this expansion and explosion of the Honduran coffee sector, from increasing international demand to government support and even population growth overall. And all those forces were successful. Between 1970 and 1996, national coffee production increased by over 200% in Honduras. Coffee even overtook bananas at this point as Honduras's number one export, landing the coffee eventually as the world's ninth largest coffee producer. Another interesting note that has repeated itself in these episodes that we do, coffee aid even came from overseas, with the United States and the U.S. Agency for International Development helping Honduras' farmers to expand production and improve farming infrastructure across the nation. Also in the 1970s, the Honduran Coffee Institute was created by the Honduran government. This is a non-profit governing body, and it was aimed at advancing coffee production in Honduras, promoting technical improvements, and providing credit to Honduran farmers. Eventually, in the 1980s and 90s, the nation passed a series of legislature to encourage more Honduran coffee production. And these laws encouraged landowners to expand their coffee production. They provided coffee-producing municipalities subsidies to build and maintain roads for coffee production. And they also increased land property titles, allowing cooperative members to divide holdings into smaller plots. This all contributed to a massive boom throughout the 1900s for Honduran coffee. But this rise of Honduran coffee wasn't just a straight upward trend, not at all. Unfortunately, the Honduran coffee market was in for some serious turmoil at the end of the 20th century, with two major catastrophes contributing serious damage to the coffee industry. First, in 1998, Hurricane Mitch devastated Honduras. Honduras lost 80% of its agriculture due to this hurricane, and many coffee growers 
chose to smuggle what beans they did have left over into Guatemala. Now, we've heard this story before on the podcast as well, specifically back in the Congolese episode. Smuggle the beans over the border, where they fetch a higher price, but as a result, these Honduran beans received none of the credit. The effects lasted for several years, and lots of Guatemalan coffee at this time actually came from Honduras. The second coffee tragedy was 1999's international coffee price crisis, and this caused the global market to be flooded by coffee, ultimately resulting in prices collapsing. This coffee price crisis resulted in a mass Honduran migration to the United States and to other countries, with many coffee producers instead diversifying their crop or abandoning it altogether. Those farmers who remained and were still farming coffee pressured the government to move the coffee industry to a privatized sector. They privatized the Honduran Coffee Institute so it could be funded by taxation. It was at this time that Honduras also instituted a national coffee policy. Now, this is similar to those we've explored before in places like Costa Rica. These policies aim to improve coffee quality, productivity, quality control, and encourage better prices. This is also very important because Honduras wants to make sure that they have a high-quality coffee that's being exported, and so other nations don't look down on the quality of their coffee. Now, Honduras has luckily recovered largely from those tough times because of their swift action. And since the beginning of the 21st century, the Honduran specialty coffee industry has actually experienced dramatic growth, especially compared to other South and Central American regions. Honduras's fertile soil, favorable altitude, and suitable microclimates make it an incredible location for specialty coffee production. And the nation is known for its exquisite yet classic types of coffee that it produces. All of this history is what led Honduras to be the great coffee producing nation that it is today, currently the seventh largest grower on the planet. So, what goes into a cup of Honduran coffee? Coffee beans from Honduras are wet processed before they're graded based on their quality, specifically, their altitude. They have three standards for altitude and coffee. They've got the central standard, which is grown below 1,200 meters above sea level. They've got the high grown, which is 1,200 to 1,350 meters above sea level. And then they've got the strictly high grown, which is 1,350 meters above sea level or more. And this is very, very important for the quality of the coffee. And all Honduran coffee is graded on these three standards. For the past five years, Honduras has really rivaled some of the best coffee in the world when it comes to their cupping scores and when it comes to their export numbers. They were even the second largest exporters of high-quality Arabica beans in the world in 2012. So that's a really big deal, again, for their Arabicas, the high-quality beans. Most of the coffee grown in Honduras are classic Arabica varieties, the old Arabicas as they're called. These are varieties like Tipica and Bourbon. And this results in a straightforward, classic, delicious cup of Honduran coffee. Honduran farmers tend not to experiment with more modern types of coffee, and that's why they stick to these classic varieties. And honestly, Honduran coffee may be the ultimate underdog in the coffee industry, maybe partly for that reason. When Coffee Review examined 18 different coffees from Honduras, Half of the coffees received ratings of 90 or over. They described the coffee as having old-fashioned virtues with a clean structure and a gentle classic complexity. They noted aromas of vanilla and hazelnut, flavor notes of chocolate with hints of nuts. Some Honduran regions produce coffee with caramel undertones, perfect for an espresso. They've got balanced acidity, with a round, medium body, it makes for an exquisite, classic cup of coffee. Honduras still has a very long way to go before it's recognized and labeled like, say, Colombian coffee is. But Honduras is well on its way. 
with a robust regenerative agriculture scene, plenty of passionate small coffee producers, and an undying love for the coffee plant, there is no stopping Honduras's rise as it cements itself as one of the greatest coffee-producing nations on the planet Earth. Thank you for spending this time with me today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of Honduran coffee, a unique little nation making big waves in the coffee industry. I do love these regional explorations. You can look forward to more of these. We've got an interview coming up uh, about blockchain technology and coffee. You can look forward to that. More coffee history, more Dr. Coffee. I know you guys love it. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying subscribed. That's all for now. This is Jordan River signing off, wishing you an extraordinary day. We'll see you next time on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.